The V22 Osprey is a multi-engine, dual-piloted, self-deployable, medium lift, vertical takeoff and landing, short takeoff and landing, tilt rotor aircraft designed for the U.S. Marine Corps for combat, combat support, combat service support, and special operations missions worldwide. It has also been designed to combine the functionality of a conventional helicopter with the long-range, high-speed cruise performance of a turboprop aircraft. The aircraft first started to be designed back in 1981 after the failure of Operation Eagle Claw during the Iran hostage crisis in 1980. It was Bell Helicopters and Boeing Helicopters who got their heads together to come up with the design. The V-22 took its first flight in 1989 and for many years since then has been subject to many alterations and developments. In this video, we are going to take a look at what those changes were and if they were really worth $72 million. Before we get started, if you do enjoy this video and would like to see more just like it, remember to give us a like and subscribe to our channel to get more sent straight to your notifications. The V-22 was the first tilt rotor for military service and was fielded to replace the CH-46 Sea Knight helicopter. Realizing there was a great need for a new type of aircraft, one that could take off and land vertically, carry combat troops, and do everything at speed. It has been deployed to support troops in combat since 2007. But before this time, the Osprey program faced several developmental challenges, including several crashes during tests that resulted in 30 deaths. Going back to the very beginning, it all began in 1981 with a project called the JVX, which stood for Joint Service Vertical Takeoff and Landing Experimental Program under the Army leadership. The U.S. Marine Corps quickly became interested in the program due to their need to perform amphibious landings. So the Army and Navy joined forces and gave the design contract to the Bell and Boeing partnership. The JVX aircraft was designated V-22 Osprey in January 1985, and in March of that year, the first six prototypes were being produced. In 1986, Bell Boeing was awarded a $1.7 billion contract for the V-22 by the U.S. Navy. But at this time, all four U.S. military services were involved. In 1988, the first V-22 was publicly rolled out, and in that same year, the U.S. Army left the program. Over the course of several years, the development costs of the V-22 began to increase some of which were caused by a requirement to fold the wings and rotors to fit aboard ships. The development budget was first set at $2.5 billion in 1986, increasing to a projected $30 billion in 1988. By 2008, $27 billion had been spent, and another $27.2 billion was required for planned production numbers. Between 2008 and 2011, the V-22's estimated lifetime grew by 61%, mostly for maintenance and support. So what makes the Osprey so expensive? The Osprey is the world's first production tilt rotor aircraft with one three-bladed prop rotor, turboprop engine, and transmission nacelle mounted on each wingtip. For takeoff and landing, it typically operates as a helicopter with the nacelles vertical and rotors horizontal. Once it has taken off, the nacelles rotate forward 90 degrees in as little as 12 seconds for a horizontal flight, making it more fuel efficient. Rolling takeoff and landing capability is achieved by having the nacelles tilted forward up to 45 degrees, although other orientations are possible. It has a ferry range of over 2100 nautical miles and its operational range is 1100 nautical miles. Composite materials make up 43% of the airframe and are used in the prop rotor blades. When storing the Osprey, the rotors fold in 90 seconds and its wing rotates to align front to back. Due to the requirement for folding rotors, their 38-foot diameter is 5 feet less than optimal for vertical takeoff, resulting in high disc loading. A majority of the time, the missions are performed in fixed-wing flight which reduces wear and tear and operational costs. The fixed-wing flights also go higher, allowing longer-range line-of-sight communications. Portable heat shields were placed under the engines in order to protect the ship's flight decks and coatings. The two Rolls-Royce 1107C engines are connected by drive shafts to a common central gearbox, 
making it possible for one engine to power both prop rotors if an engine failure occurs. The only downside is that the V22 is generally not capable of hovering on one engine. If a prop rotor gearbox fails, both engines must be stopped before an emergency landing. The engines have since been increased in power by 17% via a new Block 3 turbine. The aircraft has a maximum rotor downwash speed of over 80 knots. Within the glass cockpit are four multi-function displays compatible with night vision goggles and one shared central display unit. Images on this include digimaps, imagery from the turreted forward-looking infrared system, primary flight instruments, navigation, and system status. The flight director panel of the cockpit management system allows the functions that take the aircraft from forward flight into a 50-foot hover with no pilot interaction other than programming the system. The aircraft has triple redundant fly-by-wire flight control systems. These have computerized damage control which automatically isolates any damaged areas. When the nacelles are pointing up at 90 degrees, the flight computers command it to fly like a helicopter. If the nacelles are at zero degrees, the flaperons, rudder, and elevator fly similar to an airplane. The nacelles can also rotate past vertical to 97.5 degrees in order to fly rearward. As far as weapons are concerned, the aircraft is armed with an M240G 7.62mm machine gun. Mounted on the back ramp. In January 2008, BAE Systems was awarded a contract by the U.S. Special Operations Command for the rapid development and installation of a remotely operated weapon turret for the MB-22, based on the Remote Guardian System, which provides 360-degree coverage. The Remote Guardian System is mounted on the MB-22 and is armed with the GAU-17 7.62mm minigun. BAE Systems installed the first system on a CV-22 in February 2008 for ground and flight testing. The aircraft's electronic warfare suite includes the ATK ANAAR-47 missile warning system, which consists of four electro-optic sensors with photomultipliers, a signal processing unit, and a cockpit display. The aircraft is also equipped with a radar, an infrared threat warning system, as well as chaff and flare dispensers with 60 rounds of dispensables. The V-22 can climb at a rate of 16.2 meters per second. The maximum and cruising speeds of the aircraft are 565 kilometers per hour and 510 kilometers per hour, respectively. There has also been some controversy over the safety of the aircraft. During testing between 1991 and 2000, there were four crashes resulting in 30 fatalities, and since being operational in 2007, the V-22 has had seven crashes resulting in 12 fatalities and several minor incidents. There are many variants of the Osprey, including the V-22A, CV-22B, MV-22B, CMV-22B, EV-22, HV-22, and the SV-22. Since entering service with the U.S. Marine Corps and Air Force, the Osprey has been deployed in transportation and medevac operations over Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, and Kuwait. The V-22 Osprey has seen plenty of action and is still very much in service with the United States Navy and the Japan Ground Self-Defense Force, who have had two delivered, three on order, and plans for 12 more. There have also been many other countries showing an interest in the V-22 including a possible sale of eight MV-22 Block C Osprey aircraft to Indonesia at a cost of $2 billion. They still remain in circulation, and at the last count, there were 400. The complete program so far has cost $35.6 billion after planned procurement of 408 aircraft, with each unit costing $72.1 million. I think you will agree that is a huge amount of money, but is also a huge amount of aircraft with a huge amount of technology. If there's anybody wishing to take a closer look at the Osprey, there are a few around in various museums. On display in the American Helicopter Museum and Education Center in Westchester, Pennsylvania is the V-22A. Patuxent River Naval Air Museum in Lexington Park, Maryland 
is home to the MV-22B and is also on display at the New River Aviation Memorial in Jacksonville, North Carolina. The CV-22B is on display at the National Museum of the United States Air Force in Dayton, Ohio. What do you think of the V-22 Osprey? Do you think it's worth that price tag? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a like and subscribe to our channel to get our latest videos straight to your inbox. Thanks for watching.